In today's video, I'm doing a Brexit special. Hello, and welcome to another HDY Securities Daily Report. My name is Alastair Schultz, and I'm gonna be your host through today's trading journey. Today, I'm gonna to be covering Brexit in a fair bit of depth. We've heard a fair bit coming on recently, and we've got a lot of action that's been pending on what goes on with negotiations this week for the Bank of England. So, getting into it without further ado, the idea here of what's going on with Brexit at the moment as a bit of an update, is there are two key issues that they're really being challenged with when it comes to getting things across the line. The first thing that we're looking at is about the level playing field as it's called. It's the bigger issue of the two problems that we're seeing at the moment, and it's really about the EU single market. Basically, both sides want to see similar regulatory burdens for each party. No matter which side deals with quotas and tariffs, they want to see it being on an even keel. The hardest part about this is how you actually do it. The EU is really worried about the idea of the UK undercutting them on low cost as a low cost competitor meaning that if they are making selling goods across to the European Union, they don't want it to be more attractive for some of the European businesses and companies to be purchasing goods directly from UK simply because they are cheaper. So if that happens, it does put them in a bit of a predicament because the idea of EU single market is then null and void for a number of different industries. Of course, the UK also wants to have the freedom to be able to set its own rules, which was the whole idea of Brexit in the first place. So, they're the two challenging points they're trying to get past. One side is the EU wants them to work towards a certain system or structure of regulation. That means that they can't do certain markets or have the freedom to actually change prices should they need to. Naturally, the EU is on that side of the fence while the UK wants the freedom and access to be able to do that. This is where the sticking point really lies in being able to undercut or not undercut. Same as what's going on with the back door to get through into the island situation as well. Both stand at problems when it comes to the trade relationship there. The next one to look at is really on the fishing rights. Now, both, both the EU and the UK have accepted that the UK is likely to have a bigger share. The question is how big should that share actually be? Currently, negotiations on quotas and renegotiation access is continuing. The UK wants to see renegotiation access to be an annual event, but we're not getting very far on that with the EU either. Of course, there's also the idea of having tougher boat restrictions from the UK, where a boat's ownership really lies and where it's registered as its main port of call. In this case, the UK wants to make it more challenging and have more regulation involved from getting that UK flag at the mast. So, these are where the main priorities really lie for both entities. The EU is looking at the fishing side and of course, so is they looking at the trade and the single market access. The UK is looking at both of those as well. This is where they're stuck and they've been stuck for months and months and months. There was more issue as well adding into the island situation, but that seems to have been mostly resolved at this stage, but there are still some trivial bits to get further forward. Now naturally, you would think that because if we can get past the single market access on the EU side, then the fisheries will fall into place. But that's not necessarily the case because there is a whole lot of other distribution issues that come with it. Now, moving on, what sort of timeline might we really be looking at? December 31st is really the end of it all. This is where we get the idea, we get the transition process actually happening for tariffs to be applied and everything else that goes in place. Once we hit the 31st, then theoretically, the 1st of January, we will start getting impacted by those prices, whether you're in the UK or you're in Europe, you will get some of that impact happening. Should the fishing rights really be settled in a deal? Uh, this could happen this week, from what we understand. But if it doesn't happen this week, then we might end up getting further delays. And those delays are not only going to impact the negotiation process, but also the ability to actually get things over the line in terms of getting tariffs up and running and everything along with that. If it's not ratified before December 31st, then it's really gonna make things pretty difficult for both sides to actually get things over the line and to actually get trade happening again. If this happens, then we might actually see a point of where ports are closed and the ability to trade goods are closed until tariffs have been implemented. Now, looking at what the mood is like at the moment, it's pretty interesting. All the way through this Brexit scenario that's been going on throughout the last couple of years, we sort of get an increase in optimism with people going, yes, we're getting a deal sort of starting to happen. Then we get a deadline. 
then we get a collapse in those negotiations and then all of a sudden it's an ideal no deal situation happening and then from there we end up with it all repeating itself yet again just rinse and repeat and see where it ends up so at this stage we're now looking at what the timeline's been in the last couple of days monday the 7th we had from Prime Minister Boris Johnson, his quote is obviously no deal is a possible outcome. So that's quite pessimistic in views and I certainly look at that as a negative side event. We also then have Thursday the 10th, again from Prime Minister Boris Johnson, no deal split is a strong possibility. So we've had two instances here of the optimism waning quite heavily and moving into a pessimistic sort of stance. Now from there we've then seen on Sunday just gone that the deadline's being extended. This is renewed optimism that basically both the EU and the UK are doing everything they can to try and get a deal across the table. Of course, there's no guarantees at this point and they're still talking about it today. We were ideally hoping to see that we could have something done yesterday afternoon in the London session at some stage, but here we are again today still waiting to hear where things go. We've also heard from Barnier, the chief negotiator from the EU side, who has also said now that a no deal is still a possibility. So these are the two main sticking points. It is getting very, very close to the teetering edge of when a deal can actually really be put through. And of course, should a deal not happen this year, then it might mean that throughout next year we get more negotiations occurring on single matters. They might decide to, instead of trying to put everything to a neat package with a little bow on it, they might decide to do things individually. Look at the fishing as its own component, then look at another component separately to how it accesses with the single market and of course the freedom that the UK is after. So that's really the gist of what's been going on with Brexit at the moment and what we're anticipating. When we look at what's happening with the Bank of England at the moment, they're going to be waiting to decide on what happens with this deal basically this week. This will be the last time we hear from the Bank of England before 2021 is upon us and at this point it's basically looking like if there is a no deal scenario then there is going to be some level of stimulus to help support the economy. Should we end up with a deal then we might not see too much action or a little bit of jawboning or even just some guidance to say where they're thinking and how much tools they've got at their disposal. That's the whole mess of the Brexit situation at this point in time from a reporting style. Now let's have a look at what the news is ahead of today. Today we do have a little bit coming out. They are all mostly low impact events. We have industrial production out of China, retail sales as well from there. We have claimant counts out of England showing how many people are employed versus unemployed. And we're going to be seeing um, some producer price indexes as well. Now the big one for tonight that's probably going to focus a little bit harder on is going to be the industrial production from the US. Reason being, we're going to be hearing from the Federal Reserve on Thursday and we're not entirely certain if they will or won't have any action happening. In my mind, I believe it's likely going to be more on the guidance side of things, which will give us a little bit more transparency about where we might be looking at money being spent over the next quarter, perhaps even the next year. However, there is a small fragment of possibility that says that they might actually place some action down this time. The real things stopping against that are going to be related to what happens with the coronavirus vaccine, the current lockdown situations in the US, and where we end up from there. Now, if you do have any questions from today's video, please feel free to shoot me an email at talktoal at acy.com. And don't forget to like and subscribe to this video so you can get more great content from me and ACY Securities in the future. Have a great trading day ahead.